Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome, finally, to the second episode of the Endoskeletons of Five Nights at Freddy's. You see, exactly one year ago, I posted a video called the Endoskeletons of FNAF, and I recorded it just as any, you know, old video as I did back in the day. I didn't think much of it, in fact, it was kind of a one-off video that I didn't even plan on making. I didn't really put much effort into it, it was kind of a spin-off video that I really didn't think would do all that well. Yeah, and then it went on to become my most viewed video in a matter of days. And it held that title up until, no joke, the exact one year anniversary of its posting, when my video on Help Wanted Showtime took it over. And really, ever since the posting, a lot of people have wanted a second part, an episode two. And it's not that I didn't want to make one. Of course, if a video gets 150,000 views, of course I want to make a second part. It's just simply that I couldn't. You see, in that video, I went over every single model of the endoskeletons in Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted and Five Nights at Freddy's AR. And since Help Wanted hasn't had any new content, Content, therefore no new endoskeletons to take a look at. It's all been down to FNAF AR. And I don't really know if you guys have been paying attention to that game, but there hasn't really been a whole lot of new interesting characters. And so this video is going to take off exactly where episode 1 left off. The last endoskeleton we took a look at was the Liberty Chica skin. That means we have about 30 or so characters to look at in this video. Mostly skins, but also a few characters. So let's not waste any more time. Double check, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Also hit the like button. Thanks, and let's move on. The first endo we have on our list is ironically enough the flame through our skin for the endo in. AR. You can see that the hand, which is a actual flamethrower on the skin, has been removed completely, leaving just a little nub. The tanks on his back are also gone, as well as his signature welding mask. And now he just looks like an orange endoskeleton. Next up is Broiler Baby, and she has a very interesting endoskeleton. As you can see, her head is completely melted. It's basically molten metal. You can't really get a good look of it when you're looking at the skin itself, especially when her face plates are closed. But looking at the endoskeleton individually is amazing. And yes, those are ears, and yes, that is official to Circus Baby's endoskeleton. Moving on, we have the endo head for Scorching Chica. Not really much to talk about, it is just a slightly crisp endoskeleton head with red eyes. Moving on, we have an amazing endoskeleton for the Flaming Springtrap skin. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Flaming Springtrap skin, but the endoskeleton is amazing. I love how the Sizzling Summer skins have their heads all basically melted. It looks amazing. And also getting a good look at that melted rib cage. Ooh, it looks so good. Moving on to our first official character in FNAF AR, Ballora. She looks terrifying as always. And I actually think Illumix did a very, very good job with her endoskeleton. And it also seems like the tiara thing on her head is part of the endoskeleton, which does make a bit of sense because it doesn't get affected by the faceplates in her jump scare. Entering the Dark Circus event now, we have Ringmaster Foxy up. Of course, you get a great look at his whip, and also he's missing an eyeball. Next up, Magician Mangle. As you can see, her head is completely gone, only exposing the mouth, the eyes, and also a little bit of the ears. I do love how in his endoskeleton, the top hat stays on top of her head. I find that just so funny. And of course, you you have the sans eye. You can see all the chains wrapped around his ankles and also the knives flying around her. Moving on now to Clown Springtrap. Ooh, this one's interesting. So of course the big mallet stays in play, but looking at the head, it looks so weird. The head looks like one of the searchers from Bendy and the Ink Machine. Also the endoskeleton ears are just bars sticking out of his head. Moving on to Jacko Chica, the first Jacko out of two. Of course you can see the light in her kind of chest area on her endoskeleton emitting a glow. I do love the detail on the endoskeletons for Jacko Chica and Jacko Bonnie. Because there's so many rips and tears in the suits themselves, of course there has to be a lot of detail on the endos, and I think Illumix did a great job. And since her head is all hollowed out, much like a Jacko Lantern, there's not much in there. Not trying to call you dumb, Chica, but you literally have an empty head. If it makes you feel better, Bonnie doesn't have anything in his head either, though the detail on his arms and also his ears is, again, amazing. Not much to talk about with Katrina 
Katrina Toichika here. Yeah, this is her official endoskeleton. Just her mouth and eyes. Moving on. Hey, it's Plush Trap! It took a while for him to get into the game, but he's finally here. Now, as you can see, he basically has the exact same endoskeleton that he had and have wanted if you saw that video. His head is kind of skull-shaped, which makes it very terrifying. And also, a lot of people said he looks like Sans. Of course, kind of a small character, so not much detail on the endoskeleton. And speaking of not much detail, this is the endo for Woodland Toy Freddy. Yeah, you are just looking at his eyeballs and his stick. Moving on to Boulder Toy Bonnie. This one's interesting. So if you saw part one, then you know that the toy animatronics, specifically Toy Chica and Toy Bonnie, don't usually have a fully fledged endoskeleton. And that's simply because their bodies are too thin for a proper endo. So the outcome is usually steel wool and Illumix just putting cylinders as their endoskeletons. And of course, you can see that with the Boulder Toy Bonnie skin. Just tiny tidbits of the endo around the ears, the arms, the legs, and also a cylinder in the body. Oh yeah, and those floating eyes. Now I'm not even lying when I say that the Swamp Balloon Boy skin literally doesn't have an endoskeleton. So we're just gonna move right along to the Winter Wonderland event. Kicking it off with the Black Ice Freddy Frost Bear skin, as you can see, a very simple endoskeleton. Almost too simple, you could say. And this is probably one of my favorites. This is the Arctic Ballora skin. It is definitely interesting to look at the skin without all of the ice crystals coming out of her. I think the waist section is probably the most interesting, and also the completely white face that she has, as well as keeping her tiara. And just like the Woodland event skin of Swamp Balloon Boy, Frostbite Balloon Boy doesn't have an endoskeleton either, which kind of makes sense because when you look at them, they don't really look like they would have an endoskeleton. They don't even look like animatronics. And moving on to the big man himself, the most recent character as of today that we got in December. What kind of do for a character? This is the endo for Golden Freddy. I'm still so surprised that he made it into the game, but he looks amazing. I've always thought that Golden Freddy had very broad shoulders in FNAF AR, and it looks like that is most definitely the case. And he also, interestingly enough, doesn't have a torso. Moving on to the Frost Plush Trap skin. Hey, he may have used the assets for Freddy Frost Bear, but he still has an amazing endo. It looks all crystally and icy and shiny. Why did they not do this with the skin itself? It's also interesting how the top of his head is completely black. Probably to make it easier for the black eye sockets to look better, or the black eye sockets are just his endo. I don't know. Moving on to the first skin of 2021, we have Heartsick Baby. The first skin in the Heartstoppers event is a Baby Cupid Baby skin. How funny is that? As you can see, it's basically the same as the regular Circus Baby endoskeleton, except she has wings which I was kind of always iffy about when looking at the skin itself, but looking at it on the endo, it looks fantastic. And now we move on to the second skin in the event Blackheart Bonnie. His whole body's normal except for his head. It seems like they simplified his endo head a bit, and also I always thought it looked weird, but his ears appear to be further up on his head. Like they stick up a bit more, you know, they stick out of the suit. And it looks like his endoskeleton backs that. Moving on now to the Ancient Equinox event Serpent Mango. This was always an interesting skin in my opinion, but stripping away the suit and being left with the endoskeleton, it really doesn't look any different from Mangle's normal endo. The only difference besides the tail and of course the sun is the moon is slight color alterations. But then we move on to the Curse Springtrap skin and I love this endoskeleton. It just looks so dead, which is so interesting because the suit itself is very bright and vibrant with colors, but taking away the suit and only having the endoskeleton, it looks so dull in color. Which isn't a bad thing, especially when you're talking about Afton. The head, his muscles, it all looks so good in an endo like this. And then what the heck happened here? So this is Melted Chocolate Bonnie. And yeah, he's definitely melted. As much as I really don't like the skin, the endo itself looks very oddly interesting. Though I do wish it looked a bit more like the Sizzling Summer endoskeletons where it's all melted together. And then probably the most basic endo we have yet is Little Red Chica. I mean, yeah, there's there's actually not much I can say about this endo. It's just a normal endoskeleton. I think it has a few more wires hanging off the chest, but that's really it. And then Big Bad Foxy. My gosh, do you look mean. Now, personally, 
I am not a fan at all of the big bad foxy skin cause it's just foxy with a bit of fur, but something about seeing the endoskeleton with those angry eyes and those big meaty claws is uh, yeah, only a bit terrifying. And then we have so far our final endoskeleton skin, Dark Water Bear Endo, and the only differences you can see really is in the legs and especially his stomach. It looks like all of the sea life, the sea coral in his suit has been taken out. Hey, remember when I brought up the fact that Toy Chica and Toy Bonnie usually only have cylinders for their endos. Well, yeah, this is sunken Toy Bonnie. Yep, this is what they have to do since his body is so slim, it can't fit a endo in it. And so all we get is a rusting endoskeleton with a bit of trippy eyes. And now Piranha Plus Trap. It doesn't really have a whole lot of alterations from the traditional Plus Trap endoskeleton. It just looks like his textures have been made to fit the aesthetic of the skin. And now we move on to the Scream Punk event, what is so far the latest event in FNAF AOR. As you can see, the Clock Walk Tutu, I guess that's what that is has been completely stripped away, as well as Ballora's prominent tip. Hey, but luckily the gear tiara stays. Once again, the toys don't really have a whole lot of room for endoskeletons, so we're back to cylinders. Though you do get a better look now at the inner mechanisms of Aeronaut Toy Freddy. And the final endoskeleton for today is Jetpack Balloon Boy. And it sucks that the endo isn't even that interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just Balloon Boy without well, Balloon Boy. And that is all of the endoskeletons now up to date in FNAF A or Special Delivery. The game's on a bit of a hiatus until the fall, so it doesn't seem like we're gonna get any new endos to look at until then. And I probably won't even have enough for an episode 3 until another year from now. But who knows, maybe we can go back in time and take a look at the endoskeletons of some of the original characters in the original games. FNAF 1, 2, 3, 4, Sister Location, Pizza Sim, Ultimate Custom Night, if it has any differences. The only reason why I like taking a look at Help Wanted and Special Delivery is because we can actually take apart the characters and look at their endos. With the original games, you know, those aren't necessarily models that we can take. They're just kind of still images on a screen, you know? So that's why I've only been looking at the models in Help Wanted and Special Delivery. But yeah, that was episode two of the Endoskeletons of FNAF. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for the amazing support on the first episode. I really did not see it coming. And yeah, if you want a part three anytime soon going over some of the original games, maybe hit the like button, maybe tap the sub button a little bit. Of course, all the models and renders are gonna be linked down in the description. I also wanna give a huge shout out to my homie OP for giving me a lot of these endos in the video. Let's see, we had 33 to go through. I think originally I had less than 10. Dude, I barely had any endos to look at in this video, but he came in clutch with the rest of them. Go give him a follow, he's linked down below. Make sure to go check out all the other renderers that I've used in this video. Now I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.